Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at forward contract as a cash flow hedge. This topic is covered in advanced accounting. This topic is covered in international accounting, and it's also covered on the CPA exam. Now, I would like to really connect with my students, with my followers, with my viewers. By all means, please connect with me on LinkedIn if you have a LinkedIn account. Or if you are a Facebook user, I have a Facebook page, Accounting Lectures. Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube to view all the lectures. And this is my Twitter account. You could always go to my website as well. So we need to talk about a cash flow. What is a cash flow hedge? A cash flow hedge deals with forecasted transaction. Now, what is a forecasted transaction? When we say forecast, what does that mean? It means we are planning. We are planning something. We are planning some forecasted transaction in the future. We might be planning to buy something. We might be planning to sell something. And that something is an foreign currency. Now, bear in mind, we have no commitment here. And this is important because if we have a commitment then it becomes a fair value hedge so here we are dealing with no commitment so what do we need to know about this cash cash flow hedge okay so cash flow hedge hedging cash flow which is I means we're going to be paying or we're going to be receiving for future transaction that not, have not yet occurred or for which there's no firm commitment so it did not happen yet and we did we don't have a commitment to do it okay how does cash flow differ from fair value cash flow may, may 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 differ from fair value in a sense that the income statement is not involved so we're gonna defer okay gains and losses from the income statement when the transaction is forecasted so simply put if it's a cash flow hedge and we have a gain or a loss, it's not going to go on the income statement yet. So what is it going to go? It's going to go first into OCI. So amount is accumulated in other comprehensive income. Then, then they are reclassified into earning in the same period which the hedge transaction affects earning. When does it affect earning is when we actually have the transaction happened okay so first it sits in oci so if we say this is a cash flow hedge well guess what any gain or losses it sits in oci how do we know it's a cash flow hedge it's a forecasted transaction we have no firm commitment once again the best way to illustrate this is to actually work an example so we will work this example to show you how this whole thing fits together Okay, on December 1st, a U.S. company, a U.S. firm plans, notice, plans to purchase. We have a plan. We did not make a commitment. We did not sign a contract to purchase a piece of equipment with an asking price of 100 franc in Switzerland. So it's Swiss franc during January of 2019. The transaction is probable. We think we're going to go through it. And the transaction is denominated in euros. Therefore, we have to buy it in euros. On December 1st. The company enters into a forward contract to buy 100,000 francs for 101. I guess it's going to be in franc. It's not denominated in euros. It's a Swiss franc. So we bought a contract to buy 100,000 franc at 101. Let, let, me, let me stop you right there. Well, guess what? I bought 100,000 Swiss francs at 101. What does that mean? It means my commitment for this whole thing is one hundred and one thousand dollar so when, when i buy this piece of equipment i guaranteed myself a price of one hundred and one thousand spot rates and the forward rate at for january 31st and december are as follows so this is when the transaction this is when we plan to buy it which is this really doesn't make any sense because we didn't do anything for the spot rate so this is when we bought the forward contract at this rate this is the spot rate for the balance sheet again it's meaningless to us what we care about is the forward rate on December 31st to see what happened. And on January 1st and February 1st, the spot rate is 104. And this is going to be relevant to us because that's going to be the settlement date. So what do we do first? The first thing we're going to do is we are going to put the transaction, put the forward contract on the books. The forward contract is on the books. So what we do is we debit forward contract receivable from an exchange dealer, 101, which is this, which is an asset. So we put an asset on the books, 101, and we credit dollar payables to exchange dealer, 101. So this is basically our uh, how much we have to pay, 101. And this is fixed. In this situation, this is 
fixed. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start to input those accounts and a T account to show you how this is going to move along along the way. Now, remember, we did the hedging, we did the fair value hedge, and we did the regular currency transaction. In this situation, I'm going to do the fair value. So the fair value, this is the third example. The reason I showed you the other one is to, in case you have any questions, you can go to the other one. Now, in this example, since we are be pay we're going to be paying, this amount is fixed. So this is the fixed amount we are committed to, 101. So the dealer is going to give us uh, 101. They're guaranteeing the price at 101 for us. And this is the hedge. The red is what we are hedging. I'm sorry, the hedge, not what we are. We don't have anything hedged yet. Uh, we, we don't have anything being hedged yet. This is the hedge. The red is, is the hedge. Okay, let me just add one zero here. Let's go back and see what happened on December 31st. On December 31st, the forward contract rate was 1.02. Is this bad news or good news for us? Actually, this is good news. Why? Because if we waited till December 31st to buy the contract, we would have to pay 100 times 102. We would have been responsible for 102,000. However, since we already bought the contract, our contract is only worth 101. It means we have a gain. So we credit foreign exchange gain. Very important to notice this. OCI 1,000, and we debit our forward contract receivable from exchange rate 1,000. Simply put. We made a good choice by buying the contract December 1st because by December 31st, the contract, our contract had a gain of $1,000. Once again, go ahead and update your T account. So debit this $1,000 and we have foreign exchange gain OCI $1,000. Okay, let's go back and see what happened next. Yeah, well, what happened next, it's going to be January 1st. On January, I'm sorry, January 31st, January 31st, the spot rate was 104. And remember, on that date, that's the settlement date. That's also considered the forward rate. The forward rate is 104. OK, what does that mean? We started at 101 when we bought the contract. By December 31st, the contract was 102 and we had a gain of a penny. By January 31st, if we waited, it would have been 104. So we gain an additional two pennies. And that two pennies, if we multiply it by 100,000 Swiss franc, it's going to give us a gain of additional gain of 2,000. Therefore, we debit the receivable, the forward contract receivable, $2,000, and we credit foreign exchange OCI 2,000. Let me do this. Again, it's all in this example, we're always having gains. And this was 1,000, not 100. And we have an additional 2,000 in OCI. So it's so far so good. I mean, we made the right choice when we bought that when we bought that uh, contract. Now we are ready to settle. Basically, we are ready to settle. How much cash do we have to pay for this land? We have to pay 101. This is how much cash we have to pay. Why 101? Because when we started the contract, it was the dollar payable to exchange dealer. When we bought this edition, that initial contract, it was 101. Therefore, we're only responsible for paying 101. If we did not do so, we would have to pay 104 if we did not hedge the position. Okay? So, we credit cash 101, debit dollar payable 104. Then, forward contract receivable exchange dealer is transferred to investment. So, therefore, we credit this account and we debit investment. So now we in, now we have the investment in foreign contract and, and, and the investment will pay for the equipment. So let me update the account before we proceed. So I'm going to have to pay cash 101 and I'm going to have to debit my payable from the contract 101. So what happened is this, my dollar payable is gone. Then the balance right now in this account is 104. So I'm going to credit this account. I'm going to credit the hedge 104. I'm going to credit the hedge 104. As a result, the hedge goes down to zero. And for this credit, I will need to debit this account 104. So this account is gone. Okay. Then I'm going to buy the equipment. And how am I, how, how am I buying the equipment? I'm buying the equipment with paying with the investment. Therefore, I reduce my investment 104. And my equipment is recorded at 104. Therefore, my investment is zero. Okay. This is gone. My equipment is 104. This is how much I paid the equipment for. Hold on a second. I only paid 101. Oh, yes. I have 3,000 of gain. 
good. It was a good transaction. Overall, it was a good transaction. So basically what we did is we hedged the position. We only paid 101 for an equipment. We would have, we would have to paid 104 if we waited without the without the without the um, forward uh, contract. Okay, notice we debit the equipment, credit the forward contract. All right. And again, this is a fair fair value hedge. And the reason it's called fair value hedge is because what we did is we park everything in OCI. Now again, oh, um, at the end, what we do is we can move the, we could move this from OCI. Oops, sorry. We could move this from OCI and credit. I mean, my pen doesn't work anymore. And credit again to go from, to take it from OCI to let it hit the income statement again. Okay, because OCI eventually is reclassified. So this is basically a fair fair value hedge. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me. Um, if you need additional lectures, please go, go to my website. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. And if you happen to visit the website, please consider donating. Thank you very much. Good luck.